Joe, what happens if other protocols that trade speed for centralization, um, or, for, or, or speed or centralization, I guess, for security is really the issue here, yeah. gain adherence in the interim between now and then? I'm thinking about Ripple, for example, or I'm thinking about EOS. So Ripple isn't really a blockchain technology. It's a sort of a payment system. Uh, so I, I don't really consider okay. that a competitor. So let's say EOS. Uh, so for e argument's sake. EOS saying. is a slightly, maybe, uh, slightly decentralized uh, approach at building a blockchain system. Um, we are moving into a world where. Um, we're going to have liquid deep markets for many different kinds of crypto assets, uh, uh, crypto commodities, equities, bonds, cryptocurrencies. Um, in that world, you need a very decentralized trust layer. Uh, if you have as your trust layer, uh, 21 people who know one another, who regularly confer with one another, who can't govern their situation and who are, are, are fighting, um, I know So this is, this, is all, this is all geek speak for the death of EOS? Uh, no, I don't think okay. <laughs> EOS is a sort of interesting technology, but it's incredibly dangerous to treat it as a layer one technology. Uh, it's a good layer two technology. If you uh, link EOS in to a smart contract on Ethereum, you get the full security of the Ethereum network. All of the tokens uh, in your layer two technology are protected by layer one. If something goes wrong at layer two, people take their money out uh, and they do you and see it's a, perfectly do safe. Do you see at layer a future, one. Joe, in which all of these competing coins survive? Or will it be, say, a duopoly? So, wow, this is a great, great uh, discussion. And like I said, is, this kind of content might be confusing if you're not very educated. And I will be creating more videos where I go into this. Um, and what I do try to do is try to have other people a part of my show so that way they can ask me questions because I do feel like sometimes I move really quickly. And just having someone that doesn't have as much experience uh, ask me questions, hopefully we'll clear it up. But um, if this part of the interview, you're completely lost and you don't really understand the difference between Ethereum and EOS, I would highly recommend before you are buying this fire cell or whatever, but I, I would take a deep dive. And like I said, I'll, I already have some content where I go into what Ethereum is and what a first generation crypto is and a second generation crypto. And I'm going to try to create more content to hopefully make these interviews easier to understand. Um, but like I said, uh, a big part of it is you have to be intellectually curious. And hopefully by sharing this content, uh, we do that. And like I said, share your comments as well, too. It will really, really help on just helping everyone who's a part of this channel and anyone who wants to learn about cryptos kind of tell a difference between all these coins because it is very, very confusing. And uh, the next video segment, I'll actually will go on uh, the future. I think he, he's bringing up a great discussion. So I'm really excited to share that as well. But let me know your thoughts on this and I will talk to you soon.